What, what? This is DJ Hawk, and tonight we're spinning One Night Ultimate Werewolf Daybreak. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. <laughs> One Night Ultimate Werewolf Daybreak is a standalone expansion to, you guessed it, One Night Ultimate Werewolf, my second favorite board game of all time. Cthulhu Wars by Sandy Peterson of Sandy Peterson Games is my favorite board game of all time. Cthulhu, Cthulhu Wars! Ah! The core gameplay of the expansion is exactly the same as the original. Choose three more roll cards than there are players, deal out a secret roll card to each player, and put the three remaining ones in the middle. Then, everyone closes their eyes for some nighttime shenanigans. Once the night phase is over, everyone opens their eyes, and you desperately try to convince the other players that you aren't a werewolf and don't deserve to die. Finally, everyone votes for which townsperson to kill. If none of that is ringing any bells, then allow me to recommend that you watch this amazing tutorial on the original One Night Ultimate Werewolf, in which the charming host explains the gameplay in greater detail. Ah yes, that host was me. I was so young back then. So beautiful. <sighs> Link down in the description. Go ahead. I'll wait. There is an eighth day to every week that nobody mentions and even fewer remember. What have you been doing that your mind is so desperate to forget? Ah, welcome back to the future. As I said, Daybreak doesn't change any of the rules from the base game. What it does do is add a complete set of new character roles. It's so complete, in fact, that you don't actually need the original in order to play. Of course, you can mix and match the roles from the base game and Daybreak as your heart desires. So what do these new roles add? Well, the main theme of Daybreak is buffing the werewolves. Introducing werewolves with powers, villagers that are weaker versions than their base game counterparts, and introducing some powers that change villagers into werewolves. Oftentimes in Daybreak, the werewolves end up as the majority, and the villagers are on the defensive. Once the werewolves figure out what the hell's going on, the rolls. The Sentinel. The Sentinel places a shield token on another player's card at the start of the night, and places that player under house arrest. That player is protected from all other powers, but on the flip side, they also can't perform their own power. If you wake up and see the Sentinel token on your card, go right the hell back to sleep. Sorry. Hashtag Sentinel's not sorry. The Alpha Wolf. If the Alpha Wolf is in your game, add a fourth werewolf card face down to the three middle cards. The Alpha Wolf is a wolf. He wakes up when the other werewolves wake up, and he wins if the other werewolves win. For his night action, the Alpha Wolf must trade that special fourth center card with another player's card, turning them into a werewolf. Side note, any other characters that interact with the middle cards can also interact with that fourth middle card. The Mystic Wolf. The Mystic Wolf is also a wolf. She wakes up during the werewolf phase and wins if the werewolves win. For her night action, the Mystic Wolf may look at another player's card. Remember, you can't interact with a player's card that has the Sentinel's shield token on it. It doesn't matter how mystical you are, Wolfkin. The Dream Wolf. The Dream Wolf is the unwanted stepchild of the Werewolf Clan. When all the other werewolves wake up, he doesn't. Instead, he sticks out his thumb so the other werewolves know exactly who to blame when they lose. The Dream Wolf wins and loses with the other werewolves, but probably won't be too much help. The Apprentice Seer. The Apprentice Seer looks at a single card from the middle. She's just not ready for the big leagues yet. The Paranormal Investigator. The Paranormal Investigator looks at up to two other players' cards one at a time. But if he sees a werewolf or a Tanner card, he stops looking at other cards, and his card is now a werewolf or a Tanner as appropriate. He's actually a really shit investigator, TBH. Sam and Dean Winchester have been doing this on Supernatural for years, and neither of them has ever turned into a werewolf. Or a tanner, for that matter. The Witch. The Witch can choose to look at any card in the center, but if she does, she must trade it with a player's card. She can even trade it with her own card. Magical. Magical. Oh, that's more ghostly. The Village Idiot. The Village Idiot leads to some excellent adventures. 
He moves every card except his own, one position clockwise or counterclockwise. Of all the roles, the village idiot is the hardest one to actually do secretly. You're almost certainly going to bump into somebody as you move all of their roles around on the table. Classic village idiot, the revealer. The revealer turns over another player's card and leaves it that way. Unless he revealed a werewolf or a tanner, in which case he flips the card back over. This sounds great, but it may actually be a problem because it lets the werewolves know exactly who is safe to vote for. Revealer? I hardly know, no, Jordan, we're not doing it this time. The curator. The curator takes a random artifact and puts it on somebody's card. He doesn't know which artifact he's dropping, but he can choose to give it to himself if he's feeling lucky. He's like my weird Uncle Frank, constantly bringing stuff over to my house and leaving it there for me to deal with. Come on, Frank, I don't want your leftover soap bits. Nobody does. Who even keeps those? These artifacts change how you play the game once you wake up. If you see an artifact on your card when you wake up, the very first thing you do is secretly look at it. If it's the cudgel, brand, or claw, stop! You're now a tanner, villager, or werewolf as appropriate, regardless of what role is currently in front of you. If it's the mask of muting, stop! You are not allowed to speak this round. You can, however, gesticulate wildly. If it's the Shroud of Shame, STOP! You must sit facing away from the table for this entire round. If it's the Void of Nothingness, STOP! Oh wait, no, this one doesn't actually do anything. Carry on. You're the only one who knows what artifact you have, so feel free to lie about it. Just like the rest of this game. The Bodyguard. The Bodyguard has no knight power, but whoever he votes for cannot die. If the person he's pointing to got the most votes, the person with the second most votes dies instead. I don't want to repeat myself too much, but this game has great replay value. You can play it over and over and over again without getting bored of it. And in fact, you can play it more than one time, and that's totally cool. If you play it two times, great. Three times, still great. Ten times, still great. Hundred times, okay, that's a little too much now. You should probably play a different game. Every combination of roles and group of frenemies feels completely different. And when you mix in the original roles, can you imagine robbing the paranormal investigator and not knowing whether you're a werewolf or not because you don't know what he saw? It gets even more crazy. So that's Jailbreak, the ironically titled game of intense solitary confinement. So that's Rare Steak, the game where you jostle for position to get the best spot on the grill. So that's Paid Date. The game of courtesans and sugar daddies. So that's Daybreak, the game where you learn just how well you can lie to your friends. Stay tuned to watch us play this with sweet, sweet alcohol. And if you're Team Jacob, don't forget to like this video. But if you're Team Edward, subscribe. We've got some videos coming just for you. Either way, why not leave a comment telling us what game we should play next? I'll see you next time. But until then, play responsibly. Which, wait up. You may look at one of the six cards. Oh if my you God. do, you must exchange that card with any player's card. Why don't you have like a sexy picture? I don't know. I don't know.